Welcome back to Software Developer Diaries. In this video, we're gonna dive deep into different popular types of authentication methods on the web, such as single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, passwordless, even browsers' new web authentication API, and so on. And talk about their pros and cons so that you can choose the right one for your project. If you're ready, let's get started. There are a lot of terminologies when it comes to authentication on the web, and it can be confusing. Many people even confuse authentication and authorization, which is a completely different thing. But worry not, I'm also gonna explain what that is in just a moment. As a result of always improving cyber attacks, companies start to develop more sophisticated authentication strategies. And we're gonna start with the most traditional and simple way of authenticating your users. That is with a password. Password-based authentication can be on the whole spectrum of security robustness. It can be very unsafe if you let your users set simple passwords and don't use hashing to store them in a database, or you can try and make it quite secure by making sure you follow all the best practices such as using HTTPS, salting before hashing, rate limiting, timeouts, and so on. Under the hood, password-based authentication relies either on cookies or JSON web tokens. Cookies have been the default way for a long time and it works like this. The client posts the login credential to the server, the server verifies the credential and creates a session ID, which is stored in the database and returned back to the client via said cookie. To prevent the chance of XSS and CSRF attacks, it's a good practice to accompany your cookies with attributes like secure, HTTP only, and same site. Each subsequent request from the client has the session ID attached. It gets verified in the server and the request gets processed. Upon logout, the session ID will be cleared from both the client cookie and database. JWT, on the other hand, is stateless, meaning it doesn't hold sessions of the user in the server. Upon receiving a password from the client, the server generates a signed JWT and sends it back to the client. Tokens have a unique structure, a header, payload, and signature. It's typical to store it in one of the storages like local storage, session storage, or even as a cookie. And now the state lives on the client. On subsequent requests, the token will be passed to the server and verified. I don't think password-based authentication is gonna go anywhere anytime soon, but here's an upgrade to it. Single sign-on is what Gandalf has told us a very long time ago. In simple words, SSO is what lets users log into their Spotify account using Facebook, for example, or lets employees of a company navigate through different interconnected services while logging in only once. There are a couple of commonly used SSO standards, like SAML and OpenID Connect. The former is primarily used for enterprise SSO and internal networks, whereas the latter is for social logins. Oh, and it also uses JWT under the hood. SSO can also be extended to implement authorization through the OAuth protocol. Remember this word? It simply means identifying if an entity has permissions to certain assets. A typical SSO flow would look something like this. A user browses the website they want to access and clicks on sign in with Google. This website then sends the user's email address to the identity provider, in this case, Google. Google then checks whether the user is authenticated, in which case it will grant access. Otherwise, they will be prompted to provide credentials. Once Google validates the credentials provided, it will send a token back to the website confirming a successful authentication and subsequently redirect to some predefined page. You can actually save time and set up SSO with a dedicated platform like Frontech with a few clicks. Remember to check it out, link in the description. So the pros and cons of SSO are that now users don't have to remember passwords for multiple applications and companies that integrate it often see drops in costs and downtime. Cons? I personally don't really see any. It's already taken up most of the market for enterprise and consumer applications. However, another security layer on top can be our next method. Multi-factor authentication, aka MFA, is a combination of something that user knows, such as pins or passwords, and something the user has, such as cards, hardware tokens, or phone. Let's say you ask the user to fill in a password and then send them a push notification. 
an SMS with a confirmation code, call them or let them download the Authenticator app and use the code generated there. Authentication strategies here are quite straightforward. According to one of the most recent security surveys, MFA can prevent most account hacks, but it has its own pitfalls. People may lose their phones or SIM cards and not be able to generate an authentication code. Although if you set up a convenient way to restore it, that shouldn't be a big problem. And now let's talk about the cool kids on the block. One of them being passwordless authentication. Now we're getting to the interesting part. Passwordless authentication is typically deployed as a part of a multi-factor authentication or combined with a single sign-on, but it doesn't have to be. How does it look? The user wants to log into your website, so they submit an email, just an email, no passwords. Then we either send a one-time code or a magic link to that email, which can be used to finally be logged in. See how frictionless it is? Passwordless authentication drastically reduces complexity and improves user experience while maintaining strong security. Even though it's not widely used at the moment, the usage is growing rapidly since mobile users prefer this on-the-go type of authentication method. So definitely consider it too. Frontech provides this method as well and you can set it up in a few minutes. I'm going to make a video demonstrating just that. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss it. Just like passwordless authentication, there is something interesting I left out and it is biometric authentication. Biometric authentication is a way to identify users based on their biological characteristics. And believe me or not, it's one of the most, if not the most used way of authentication nowadays. But here's more to it. There was no natively available biometric authentication on the web until 2019, when W3C released the new web authentication API specification to do just that. Web authentication API or web Authn, in short, is already supported by all major browsers now and it works like this. Users follow a familiar process of choosing a unique username but instead of choosing a password you'll give biometric data from the device you use or register a physical key like Yubico. Let's take a closer look. Web Authentication API in the browser has two basic methods that corresponds to register and login. In order to understand how the create and get methods fit into this bigger picture, it's important to understand that they sit between two components that are outside the browser, server and authenticator. To log into a website enabled with Web Authentication API, a user must register if not already, meaning give the biometric data to the authenticator or the device using create method. This will generate something called a credential. It's a pair of keys, one public and one private for the website. The private key stays on their private device and nowhere else. The public one sits on the server. The server can be a simple express app that is responsible for verifying information that comes from the get method. This technology lets you integrate your app with strong authenticators now built into devices like Windows Hello or Apple's Touch ID. There are even NPM packages that can be used with Node.js and React, for example. If there is one thing in common in all the above mentioned authentication methods, it's the need for small details in implementation. And obviously, why reinvent the wheel if you can use Frontech to have access to all the needed features and methods that I mentioned before? It's a piece of cake. Simply head over to frontech.com to start for free. With a simple UI, it's only a matter of toggling on and off to build a beautiful, secure and very customized login or registration page for your app. After you've done that, you'll find a very neat step-by-step -step guide on how to add it to your existing app. You can even choose to integrate it with one of the JavaScript frameworks like React, Angular, Vue or Next.js and enjoy all the authentication methods in your arsenal. Frontech lets you build a subscription model within your app in just a few quick steps. Check the analytics of users logging into your app and separate environments for development, testing and production. Be it password-based with the JWT or passwordless authentication with custom email templates, multi-factor authentication, social logging, reCAPTCHA or user management. You can find everything there. Check the link in the description. You won't regret it. And thanks to Frontech for sponsoring this video. As always, if you found this video useful, please subscribe and smash the like button. It really helps out the channel. See you in the next one.